Welcome to my Palantir valuation model. Today we will be running through and taking a look at Palantir's valuation over the next five years. So I have compiled what I believe to be one of the most comprehensive valuation models, the three financial statements, taking in historical information, building a DCF and basing equity valuations upon that. But I sent out a poll asking if anyone would benefit from a walkthrough on my analysis of Palantir and where I think it's going over the next five years. This is actually a model through the year 2030, but today I just want to focus on 2022 through 2026 and we'll just be covering a few sections today if we can get 750 likes i will continue this series assuming there is adequate interest so let's start off with the revenue build which is essentially taking palantir's revenue segments and building them out into the future based on growth that I have forecasted based on growth that Palantir has told us they will be hopefully capable of. So I've segmented this out between commercial and government as you would expect. All of this is going to be my base model for Palantir. It might be aggressive in your eyes, it might be bearish in your eyes. I don't know, that's what I am just forecasting. So that is why I always recommend someone to build their own model because that really does open your eyes in terms of what the numbers mean to you. So starting off on the commercial side, we have the historical information here for 2021, about $645 million for the commercial side last year, which was 34% growth. Now Palantir has told us they're going to be doing at least 30% growth through the year 2025. We're extending this to 2026 in this scenario for a five-year model. But it's important to recognize commercial and government, one is going to be higher than the other. So in this case, I believe commercial will actually be driving the majority of Palantir's growth. I think Palantir commercial can be in the low to middle 40% range going forward. So if we assume Palantir commercial actually does about 43% ramping up to 45%, then I think it can start to cool down. We've heard a lot of contracts Palantir's been working on. Of course, the whole Palantir flywheel that I've been talking about on this channel for so long. I'm very bullish on Palantir in the commercial segment. I think they can deliver strong numbers going forward, especially over the next five years. But of course, that growth will start to taper out. I think it'll start to taper out in terms of the percentage Hager that Palantir is able to provide, but once again, I'm very bullish on Palantir in the commercial segment to well exceed their aggregate 30% and drive Palantir's growth higher than that. You can refer to my other videos on why I think commercial will outperform. Those 40% figures lead to almost a billion in revenue in 2022, 1.3 in 2023, almost two alone in 24, 2.8 in 25 and 4 billion in 2026. So now let's hop on over to the government segment. I'm a little less bullish on this because it is of course the much more mature segment of Palantir's business, but nonetheless there is much more room to go as Palantir continues to expand. I think they're going to have a bit of a tough time in 2022 as all of the macro tailwinds will help going forward. Not all of these deals and these big contracts will start to renew in 2022, but I think they're going to renew Starting a couple years out, 2023, I think we're going to see some tailwinds, 2024 as well, and then start to see that tapering off of the CAGR. So we had 47% year-over-year growth on the government side last year. I'm expecting much less than that, being more conservative towards that 30% baseline that Palantir management seems to be expecting. So that brings us to over a billion this year, 1.6 billion next year, 2 billion for the government side in 24, 2.7 billion in 2025 and 3.6 billion in the year 2026. So that brings us all the way to 2 billion thereabouts in revenue this year. I would not be surprised if it actually falls under that 2 billion, but I think thereabouts, maybe 1.8 could be the low end, 1.9, probably what I'm more expecting and then two. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm expecting about 2 billion in revenue this year. We can see that 37% aggregate growth next year and 39% aggregate growth to get about to Palantir's 2025 target a year early, about $4 billion in revenue in 2024, and then $5.5 billion, $7.5 billion. I feel like these are achievable targets. Again, it won't be easy, but I'm very confident in Palantir's future. We look at the aggregate revenue they did last year in 2021 was 41%. So when you look at these figures of 36%, 37%, 39, 38, 37, of course it gets harder and harder to deliver 
outperformance, overperformance, and these high multi-digit percentage growth rates. But then again, I'm expecting much more to come for Palantir in the commercial segment, as we've talked about on this channel. And I think over the next coming years, the government side of the business will do very well. I've talked about that a lot recently, and that all comes together to Palantir's revenue. That's what I'm thinking, at least in this scenario. So that leads us over to the inputs page. And basically, I'll just zoom in right here. Once again, this is my base case revenue. Of course, it will go much lower than that for the bear case, higher than that for the bull case. We got Palantir US, the current share price as of close this past Friday, July 8th. We have two years of historical figures in here, currency in the US dollar, denomination in millions, tax rate at 21%, which might be overstating the tax rate for Palantir, perpetual growth rate, which we're not going to cover in this video, and starting with our fully diluted shares outstanding of 22 billion okay so let's have a look at how this works so basically you look at the key drivers down here historical years being 2020 and 2021 forecast years 2022 through 2026 so we look at the key drivers down here being the revenue growth that we already forecasted that's why it's green pulling from the prior tab we looked at those already and then gross margin now palantir's gross margin last year was 78 percent they have a target of 85 percent in the long run they've talked about that in their investor day presentation back in 2020 you can find that here on the channel so i do believe they're actually going to work their way up to that long run i believe they mean a few years not a few decades or anything crazy like that so i'm actually forecasting for an underperformance from last year 75 percent gross margin towards that 85 percent in a few years from now that's exactly what they're stating should be possible for the business and then the adjusted operating margin i believe will climb as you would expect that feeds into our numbers up here so let's just pick the year 2026 we looked at 7.5 billion in revenue and then we have our adjusted profit here based on the adjusted operating margin figure that is down below on a percentage basis. We are able to solve for the cost of goods sold. We get our adjusted operating profit, taxes, and then capex and depreciation and amortization are not too big a deal for Palantir. Of course, we're dealing with software. But basically, we're able to determine what sort of income Palantir could be dealing with. Jump on over to the income statement. Again, I've taken out the following years through 2030 because I just want to focus on these five years of forecast for today. So let's just have a look. 7.5 billion in revenue. We get down to adjusted OPEX of 4 billion and the EBIT on adjusted basis of 2.3 and some taxes along the way and the adjusted net income of about $2 billion in 2026. So one thing I wanna mention is, actually I'll do this on the next slide, but I'm going to talk about why I'm using adjusted figures. So here we are with the equity valuation method, and I wanna talk about why am I using the adjusted figures? Why am I using adjusted figures? Well, the reason is because Palantir has a lot of stock-based compensation, as everyone knows. Well, an owner of a stock is expecting payment in one form or another, either the stock price to rise or, in the long run, rather, to receive dividends. Not everyone's a dividend investor, but that is the point of stocks, is to earn a return on them, and the point of a company is to be able to return profits to shareholders in the form of a dividend. And that is basically the entire point that we are modeling Palantir today. Now, with stock-based compensation, it is literally a non-cash expense. It's nothing to do with the cash on the the balance sheet therefore it has nothing to do with future profits earned by the company except on an accounting basis that is why i have backed out the stock-based compensation that's why we're using adjusted figures and that is because if palantir earns profit in the future and is making billions of dollars in cash just because they're issuing stock-based compensation that does not affect the amount of profit they are able to earn however I want you to understand it does affect the shareholders in one way, and that is the amount of ownership you have. Now, as an owner of Palantir, you get diluted over time, just like many, many tech companies. But I believe the best way, as I have learned, is to forecast on an adjusted basis and correct for the stock-based compensation with the outstanding share count. So that is what we are going to do. So here's what I call my equity valuation methodology. We've got revenue and adjusted net income. We're gonna do a price to sales estimate and a PE estimate and then do a blended price target. Revenue we've already looked at. So this is where it gets interesting and where it's definitely up to your interpretation as to what you think Palantir's price to sales could be worth. 
Now, the thing that I've talked about with growth companies, you can't really say Palantir is worth five times sales today because as their sales go up, by a huge margin each year from here on out, that means the stock price would have to go up huge from here on out. So what you want to do is actually doing leveling off of the price to sales estimate each year while the revenue is going up. So it's a steady, consistent understanding of where the stock should be headed. There should not be any surprises if there aren't any major outliers. So let's say Palantir's worth 19 times price to sales and then 16, 15, 14, 13, you get the idea. And then in 2030, they could be worth a steady state of, let's say Microsoft or any of the other big tech companies and a much more easy to digest price to sales estimate where Palantir has started to slow its impressive 40 or 45 or 35 or whatever percentage growth. And we have the adjusted net income, 450 million, 640 million, 910 million, 1.3 billion, 1.8 billion. You see how this really gets going over time. When people say Palantir is unprofitable, you can see how fast they're actually able to earn profits going into the future. Of course, they have to execute. It's not going to be easy, but I think the path is there for Palantir, assuming they've laid the groundwork and I'm correct in what I am assuming here for them to be very successful going forward. So the question is, what is Palantir worth on a price to earnings basis? Well, once again, it's the same idea. We know Palantir has great profitability once you back out the stock based compensation. So that's what I'm referring to. You really want to see a leveling off of the valuation metrics as the growth starts to slow. And because once their growth has started started to slow, their figures are actually much higher. And tell me what you see when you put in numbers over time, when they're growing a lot on the top or bottom line, and this figure is just flat. It means the stock price is going to take off. What you want is while these numbers are going up, you pay more for it ahead of time and less for it over time. So the stock price only gains modestly. Of course, if there's a disaster scenario, the multiple is going to collapse. If the profits aren't there, valuation is going to collapse, everything like that. But now I want to show you what Palantir's price could look like. Again, totally hypothetical, totally based on my own model here. It could be towards the bullish end. It could be towards the bearish end. Totally up to your interpretation, but this is just some numbers that I have put together. I think 13 times sales thereabouts in 2026 is fairly modest for Palantir. I think that could be fairly realistic as well, assuming we are past all of this macro treachery and Palantir is no longer suppressed along with the rest of the stock market over fears of macro policy. So 13 times sales and we could see Palantir at a $100 billion valuation. And then if we get almost 2 billion in earnings on an adjusted basis, 1.8 billion to be exact, and maybe a 60 times the earnings there. Again, you could say that's too high, say that's too low. If you're saying it's too high, you probably need to run some numbers as I was just saying on what growth companies actually look like when they earn tremendous growth rates. So it could be looking at 110 billion on a valuation basis. Now, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you because I have been forecasting down here the yearly share dilution and what that actually means for share dilution in millions. So we had some crazy dilution. This was in 2020 when they went public and then 2021. But you'll see that was just a one time. That was just when they went public. They had that expense associated with their listing. That's not happening again. In 2021, they only did 14% yearly share dilution. Now, my forecast here is for that to return to a normal rate, what Alex Karp has been saying, and I think Palantir could be down to the single digits starting this year and into next year. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we're looking at a 2.7 billion share outstanding rate, which when you see how much that's going to increase from this past year, it's a 33% thereabouts increase in the shares outstanding. So that means offset some of the valuation. Let's bring this in. So here we are. We're looking at a $39 price target offsetting for the dilution that we were just looking at and blending both the valuation projection for a Palantir's top line and Palantir's bottom line on an adjusted basis. An increase of a 285% gain percentage from where Palantir stands today. That's basically the culmination of what we're talking about today. I hope it's been helpful. You'll see all these other tabs at the bottom. You can find the full Palantir valuation model through 2030, the bear base and bull case. I'll be updating this next month 
when Palantir reports their earnings for the second quarter of 2022. You can find that in the description. Please let me know what you're thinking and remember to hit like if you want this series to be continued. Until next time.